for you already. Well, thank you very much. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for, for joining this, uh, this session focused on science communication for, for research data. This is a, a repeat session, but unique in its own, <laughs> in its own objective and hopefully in its own um, discussions. Um, let me see if I can actually get the... Yes, we have a few housekeeping, very generic housekeeping points. Um, as uh, as you might have heard, the session is being is being recorded, but uh, we encourage you to to use the chat, of course, um, and feel free to turn on your your video. It would be much appreciated to kind of see, um, yeah, who's part of the of the conversation. Um, we've added to the chat a couple of important links, including to the collaborative notes document and the group. A web page for the collaborative documents. It would be useful, I think, to to add your your name and affiliation and um, also a contact um, information. There's a table in there. I think it's pretty standard across the 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 meetings that are being um, held under this plenary. Um, so we're going to start with a short round of uh, of introduction, and then we'll talk a little bit about the the charter um, and the status group. Then hopefully we we can broaden the conversation around an effort or an exercise to map the existing science communication uh, priority topics, which will connect to the hopefully to the charter that we that we have been drafting. And then hopefully stop also um, on the topic or discuss a little bit the topic of the role of the science communicator for, for research data and then define a few next steps um, for, the, for the group. So I'll start with the, with the introduction. Hello, um, so my name is Timea Viro and I'm actually a PhD student uh, working on a, on a research project on science communication for, for research data. So I'm um, following this uh, this exercise also through the lens of the of the of this group. Um, Bahare, I don't know if you. Hello, my name is Bahare Haravi. I'm a professor of AI and media at the University of Surrey, and I work on well AI and media and journalism, but also on uh, science communication and data storytelling. Okay, um, and now we we wanted to open up the the floor to to all of you if you would like to just briefly introduce yourself and um, just say what has brought you to to this session. No, we don't want to. I mean, I'm not gonna call call you out, but it would be it would be nice if you if you would like to to introduce yourself and just say what what has brought you here what's your interest in in science communication listening in is also is also fine so uh, i mean uh, yeah you're more than welcome to 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 do so if you if you prefer okay um so let's that's then if um, if no one would like to would like to speak up, we can move on to 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 maybe a short conversation around the 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 status of the of the group. Um, as you as you might might know, uh, but just in case you're not very familiar with the with the process of the um, of the of the RDA around the around the groups, there are different categories of um, of groups that um, that work under the RDA umbrella. Um, we have um, we are aiming towards setting up an interest group for for science communication for for research data, and we have developed a, a charter document. Um, that is looking at the problem statement, so what it is that we're actually um, trying to address, what are the topics, so how do we break down the, the problem, um, and what it would be the focus um, of, this, of this effort, what would be hopefully the outcomes, so what do we envision the, the group would produce at the end of its, at, through the duration of its uh, lifespan, because this is not a working group, it's an interest group, and also the synergies within the within the RDA. So um, I'm gonna go through at least these 
four sections of the of the charter. Uh, the goal is to to start the to start the conversation um, and try to understand if these are if these are really um, what what people would like to to see this group to be to be focusing on in terms of um, topics and if there's anything that it, that is missing. At the same time, we would like um, and welcome your your contributions to the to the charter document that you also have in the chat. So I'll try to to put in again the the links to that. So maybe you can you can open that up and and see well uh, evaluate it for for your own. Uh, on your own, um, we hope to to collect comments to to the document, questions, edits, any any input and feedback is more than is more than welcome. So, um, as I was saying, I will go through four of the major um, sections of the of the charter. So the first one is um, the problem statement. So we we are aware that with the advancement of of open science, there's also, of course, an ongoing conversation about what it means to 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 share. And um, of course, the the research data is one of those components that um, that are envisioned for 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 this for this effort, and for which a lot of the a lot of the the sort of efforts to build up the, the open science approach have been have been focused focused on. We are trying to understand um, what the role of science communication is uh, within this context of broader sharing and if science communication can boost this sharing and thus for the specific case of research data um, ensure and increase the, the reuse and the impact across different um, domains and stakeholders. Hopefully, the goal would be to, to establish science communication as a key research data management best practice. And um, with that, uh, we have to open up the conversation around um, the incentives, the skills needed, roles and recognition, and also overall, um, as it came out of the conversation that we had in the first session, uh, what what are the implications for 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 research assessment from that point of view? Now, um, to try to break down the <laughs> the elephant in uh, in sort of digestible pieces, uh, we have identified four priorities, uh, so four topics, major topics um, that we would like to to address. So, science communication practices and uh, and the stakeholders. Um, science communication and its part um, within the research data life cycle, uh, professionalizing science communication for research data, and also um, the relationship between science communication and, and media. We feel that this um, connects very well with the, with the vision and uh, the role of, of the research data, data alliance. So um, it is... Um, one of the objectives of, of the group to raise awareness around science communication and also try to try to fit this in the broader um, RDA agenda. Again, to try to even be clearer about um, what we what we aim to to achieve the the objectives or the focus topics um, we have assigned or translated. Um, um, a set of outputs for the for the topics that we have identified. So um, we are trying to address um, at least the first three topics through the through the lens of um, a vocabulary or a science communication ontology that we feel is is needed. Um, there are quite quite a few terms. Um, it's a very generic. Um, you know, landscape out out there, and we we need to be specific. Um, so, the first step or the first output that we envision for the, for the group would be a vocabulary on or a science communication ontology. Um, then we we would like to develop a series of case studies, both from the practitioners' side, so um, different practitioners working in different uh, environments, different types of organizations. What are their success stories? What have been challenges that they have faced? How did they approach those? Um, and 
also the same type of um, case studies, but focusing specifically on, on types of, of research data from specific domains, different types as in type of, uh, of, um, of data um, belonging to different, different projects relevant for different stakeholders. So we're trying to also shift a little bit the, the lens to understand if the proper reading would be from the, from the side of the um, research data. Then we were hoping to, from the lessons learned or from the, the major uh, takeaways from the case studies to also develop a toolkit for the practice of science communication. And this would be in connection to synergy with, with media because we, we feel strongly that there is a, a set of transferable knowledge and um, also skills between these two um, pillars. Um, and it would be nice to to understand also, as Bahare was mentioning, for example, data storytelling. How does that? How can that be um, be further leveraged, for example, by by um, researchers in their better use of uh, of of the data, and also in their efforts to to share this more broadly with different audiences. Um, then the the final or the last output that we had envisioned would be um, a profile of the of the science communicator for for research data to try to un define the roles um, do a competency mapping and also understand how they they fit within different organizational um, structures um, and we were hoping to to leverage for that for this specific case um, the experience of the RDA groups working on professionalizing the roles of of data stewards. Um, I see a lot of um, a lot of parallels between the between the two efforts. So um, hopefully it will be something that we that we can leverage. And then the final. Uh, point would be the synergies within the RDA as the charter requests, um, of course, to to build up on existing efforts and also improve existing efforts. So make a contribution to, to what our colleagues are, are working on in different groups. So we foresee or have out have outlined or pointed out a potential collaboration with the engaging researchers interest group, um, especially around the case studies. Uh, we would like to maybe get further input from them on what, what works. Um, I've mentioned already the professionalizing data stewardship interest group um, to, to, to leverage the lessons learned for, for professionalizing the, the role of science communicators. Um, there are quite a few groups working on education and training in handling research data and also in sharing the rewards and credits. So this goes back again to the to the idea of um, career progression, research assessment and 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 so on. And of course, the the, the rewards and credits. And finally, or maybe not finally, but last but not least, um, the RDA co-data summer schools, um, hopefully to, to include science communication within the, their data curriculum. Um, these summer schools have been quite, quite successful in, in opening up uh, new opportunities for, especially for, for young researchers. And that's, that's one of the, the, the dimensions that we, that we hope to further look into. So um, I've tried to give you a summary of, of the major sections within the, within the charter. Um, we were hoping with this exercise to, to establish a, a group uh, of people that would review what uh, the, this close to final draft of the, of the charter and also to, to maybe um, see if there are any volunteers um, in terms of, uh, of, of chairs. Um, we have some initial suggestions, but uh, according to the, to the RDA guidelines, um, there should be a, a broader coverage also from, from a geographical point of view of, of, the, of the chairs. So that, that of course, that list is, is open for, for, for volunteers would be interested in, in joining this, this effort. The level of commitment is of course, um, yeah, 
the one that that you can commit to. Um, I think that if we get a consolidated um, group of three to four, even five five chairs, the the effort can be can be divided in a in a meaningful way, and also can be a reflection of of the parts of the of the of the activities of the group that you that you would be interested in. So, this is an open call both for for volunteers uh, in terms of reviewing the charter, but also for for chairs. Um, our next steps would be to to review to review the charter. Um, I I'm not sure if we have established uh, a deadline for for this, but I I we were talking about the beginning of um, of june so then we can actually submit it for 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 the community review and also for for the official endorsement by the by the tab and the rda council so um i spoke i spoke a lot uh, i'm curious if if this is um if this is a good reflection of the people's interest um within the within the group if you feel that that the charter is um is specific enough if you would have time to to review it um if there are any things that that you feel might be missing at this point all input is more than welcome um, I'll try in the meantime just to just to open that up. So based on the based on the links, you should be able to um, to access the the document that includes a brief introduction. Um, we've also based on the from the from the our previous conversation. So our previous session, we also had um, I we we also had a little bit of comments and some some input but more is welcome. So as I was saying, we, we have an introduction. There's also a setting of the, of the problem, the objectives, and in terms of the topics, um, how the participation um, is open to, to different categories of, um, of people. Um, the groups that I had mentioned, we would like to, to work together with. Um, connection to the sustainable development um, goals, and then we also have the have the have the outcomes. Um, there are some um, there are some uh, yeah some some also next steps in terms of the the timeline for the for the first twelve months of the of the project of the project of the group time. Um, yeah. So this is uh this is the the charter as in its current uh shape if there are any yeah Lauren hi um I was just wondering you got kind of key stakeholders um including science communicators and uh, I guess kind of journalists like people who I assume aren't kind of that involved in RDA. Um, I might be wrong. Please correct me if I am. So, uh, if if they're not, how do you propose kind of including those people as stakeholders? Oh, well, that's a very very good question. Um, by word of mouth. <laughs> so we rely on, um, on, of course, the the engagement and the links provided by by others, but also we we are trying to to reach out in other contexts so um highlight the group in in some of the other contexts that are more maybe more populated by these these sort of um yeah categories that are less present within the rda but yeah that that of course is a is a very valid valid point it's it's about communicating about our group on science communication <laughs> which is a little bit yeah it's it's putting the it's putting to to work what what we actually um, are talking about. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Uh, do you see any other um, groups or roles that we haven't identified that would be good to be added? Yeah, Mira. Hello. Hello. Hi. 
I had a question regarding the charter. So are you, um, so with that piece of work, is it only for people who volunteer as co-chairs or is that for anyone who's interested in um, contributing? As anyone well? who's interested in contributing. So the document is open. Um, you can see there, there are there are a few comments that have come in after a couple of comments that have come in after the previous session that we that we had. If you have suggestions or anything, just feel free to add that as a comment or in suggestion mode as a direct edit to the to the document. That would be more than more than welcome. We are trying to to you know crowdsource or collaboratively develop what would be the the agenda and the focus of the of the group so this sort of input is 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 extremely valuable right um where can we get the link and i i scrolled into the shared document but i couldn't find it's it, i've put it in the in the chat but we'll we'll put it also in the in the collaborative um documents actually i can do that already i think i've got it yes there you go so okay. you should you should have the have the document there the link there as well. Great, thank you. Thank you. I look forward to to input if it's a, a little bit more comfortable, of course, to to do this on your on your own time. And um, yeah, we'll follow up um, on this on this meeting with maybe outline uh, the timeline for for the collection of this of this input so if you add your name um yeah i see you already have um to the to the collaborative notes we'll send out a message and with the clear links and also what would be the the sort of hoped um input to the to the charter but thank you very much yeah thank you thank you any other questions uh, either about the charter process or the structure? Okay, um, I think then we can um, just briefly then move on to to the to the sort of mapping effort that we that we envisioned. And this connects very much to to what we had put in the in the charter, but um, we were hoping that this would be an opportunity when people can actually um, sort of speak without commitment, um, ask questions, raise questions um, about that are connected to to their work, um, to highlight further things that we should be that we should be looking into. So um, this this open conversation around the the mapping of the priority topics will feed uh, into into the outputs. Um, so in terms of the vocabulary and the the ontology that we that we had envisioned, we were think we were hoping that this can um, this can then be part of a broader. Um, contribution to, for example, the, the foster open science uh, taxonomy, which is uh, very broadly used by, by, the, by the research data management, management community. So um, if we are generating um, outputs from the, from the group, we are hoping that those can feed into, into broader efforts and be leveraged by the, by the, broader, by the broader community, thus being able to, to also reach um, some audiences that are not that well represented within within the RDA. So yeah, um, uh, an idea of how to how to do the the vocabulary um, was by leveraging um, existing taxonomies and complementing that that work with um, with additional ones. Um, in case of the in the situation or in the on the point of the case studies, um, we would like to develop um, a set of templates. Um, try to understand which would be if there are any domains to to prioritize, and any success stories that that we that might we might want to highlight. And for the toolkit, as I was saying, um, it should be developed based on the based on the case studies. So this again adds another um, another 
maybe more specific step to 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 the progression of the of the group so if within the charter we we agree to to pursue the the these these five or oh, four sorry <laughs> these four um, types of, um, of outputs, what would be the next steps that we that we would have to have to take. And as I was saying, we can we can pursue the, the path of the, the forest, uh, forest foster open science um, taxonomy for the for the vocabulary. We can develop a set of templates for the case studies and um, the toolkit based on the case studies. Um, and we would like to um, align that work with the uh, with the activities of the engaging researchers interest group and that with the with the summer schools. Um, is there anyone within the on the call that has has worked closely with with these groups? Is there um, potential connections that we can establish? Are you familiar with uh, with what they with what they are uh, with what they are doing? And well, if not, that's also that's also okay. Um, if if there's other well other work that you that you feel even outside, especially then at this point outside of the RDA. Um, that you feel would be would be relevant for us to to consider any success stories, things that you would like to share, work that you that you have ongoing. Um, I remember from from the from the from the previous session we had um we had someone from from the Australian science communicators network um joined the call and um, they've shared a little bit of the of the work that that they're doing also with the with the researchers and with different organizations um in their country um and how um they're Kind of uh, hoping to to better connect uh, with the with the researchers and establish the the role of science communicators within um, different organizations. So that that's also a little bit of the the type of input that we that we were hoping to to have at this point. If there are people who would like to to share some of the things that they're working on in terms of science communication. Lauren? Hi, I, I don't have anything to share in this regard, but I was wondering kind of what a successful science communication around research data looks like. Like what's the ultimate aim? Is it that the, the journalist or the community, whoever's communicating the science out talks specifically about the data or they're highlighting open science in general, or is it, is it more that they're, then they're just talking about the research, but they're including the other outputs, or is it specifically that they, they want to talk about the data? Well, um, I'd say that it depends very much on the on the audience <laughs> and uh, the goal of the the science communication exercise. So I would say that if um, if you have a nice um, data story around a data set that is relevant for the general public and you present it in a way that uh, people learn, interact with it, um, are, are engaged and maybe even entertained by, by that story, I would consider that as a success story for, for science communication. I mean, we've seen I'll probably let Bahare talk about <laughs> about the data stories stories more, but we've seen also in the COVID period how much of the data visualization has helped uh, people understand a little bit better the the figures instead of the just the blunt um, the blunt numbers. Yep. Okay, um, I was just yeah, I was just trying to imagine like 
you know how it differs from say like a, a regular news story that features say mm -hmm. just on the on the published article that you know the data off of the off the companies but i like the idea of that the kind of visualization of the data right that makes it really um understandable yeah um and if i, I give I, it sorry go ahead i can add something it, it could it could be the just a news article at the end of the day that's actually kind of to me, one good way of communicating science, but the scientists normally don't do that. But if we can make our data available to the journalists to do that or learn from the journalists to see how they do that or work with organizations such as the conversation who are positioned to do that. But overall, uh, my idea is that any um, practice that is used in communication could be brought into communication of science and communication of data related to the science to kind of help um, get the results out there and to as many people as possible. Um, I can also think um, at that another example of the science communication that is oriented towards decision makers. Um, a lot of the science, um, well, research data needs an interpretation at a level that would um, would help decision makers to do actual data driven decision making. And for that, we rely on science communicators who are able to to translate the complexity of the of the concepts in a way that is actionable for for certain categories of of audiences. So that would be, to my mind, another um, example of, of successful science communication. And also between different domains, if it allows the reuse of certain data um, from one domain to another. Um, Mira, yeah, I see you have your hand raised. Um, thanks. I just wondered, I quickly had a look at the charter. Um, I wondered if the work of other um, groups would be relevant, given that science communication is really per pervasive in um, across the board. Um, I asked that because one of the groups I'm involved in is um, the one working on disasters, um, setting up mm -hmm. tools, systems, um, and yeah, things of that kind. Um, and I guess one important aspect would be like, you know, we're doing a survey and one of our stakeholders um, that we're looking at interviewing would be journalists. So, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. how do they, yeah. So, yeah, so that raises this issue. So that that's just a suggestion. Yeah, that, that's that's very interesting. I I wasn't aware of of that, but yeah, certainly that that also qualifies as a as an interesting an interesting use case. And we can add that group to the to the list, um, of course, because in I'm, I mean I would assume I'm not an expert in the in the field, but I would assume that um, disaster management has a very important urgent communication component to to it, and also of translating. Um, you know, important data in a in a way that is uh, digestible and actionable for for a very very broad audience that is affected by by these sort of events. Yeah, um, is that survey finalized? Can we can we maybe contribute to it? Would that be? Um, yeah, that would be helpful. Um, we've we've done a draft um, where. They're editing it, um, but it's very close to being finished. And um, yeah, okay. um, so we, yeah, when I find out about it, I'll, I can forge you a copy. Yeah, that, that would be much appreciated. And uh, I mean, it doesn't, if it's close to, since we have, <laughs> we have a few things that we need to sort out in the beginning, maybe we can leverage the outputs of, or the outcomes from the, from the survey in our work. So I'll add the, the group to the list of, of, um, of groups of, of interest that we, that we would consider collaborating with. Thank you. That's You're very, welcome. Yeah. very useful. Any other, other work that you, that you would like to, to highlight? Oh well, if 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 not, oh, also the, sorry, go ahead. Oh yes, um, 
not that nothing else comes to mind, but if it is, I'll I'll add it to I'll put in a suggestion in the charter document for you. Yeah, that's much appreciated. If not, like in the in the spirit of the same of the of the same suggestion, I am actually um, working myself on a on a survey that looks into organizational science communication and specifically for the practices of um, yeah uh, related to communication for 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 research data. So I've got a. The, the survey is out now I'll share the link uh, with those of you that that might be that might be interested in um, in answering it actually tries to break down some of these um, some of the topics that we that we have um, that we have also also mentioned um, it's looking at individual uh, practices trying to understand what are the objectives behind it um, what are the the sort of organizational? What's the organizational support that is giving to 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 researchers and science communication practitioners um, in order to perform these um, these activities? Um, what are channels that that they use? What are the objectives of this um, of this work? How do they see that in the future um, this type of um, of uh, efforts can be can be supported? How do they relate to to journalists and um, also like science communicators in very 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 broadly? So um, it's it's a relatively short um, short survey. It should take fifteen minutes to 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 fulfill to to fill in. But um, I'm hoping that it will be a good reflection of the of the practice that we can also um, then leverage within within the work of this group, similarly to the to the one you you had suggested, Mira. So, yeah, that'd be great. Thank, thank you. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, in terms of the of the mapping effort. Um, so we've we've learned of, uh, of a few potential other connections within within the RDA, but it would be nice to 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 understand if any of these uh, these sort of activities could be could be of specific interest to to any of you. The idea would be to to find. Um, not set up separate subgroups because that might be a little bit too early. But understand if there would be people who would be interested in in leading any of these of these activities. So then we can start um, defining some of the specs for the vocabulary, for example. And as I was mentioning before, develop the um, the templates that would be that would be useful for for the for collecting the the case studies. Um, I think one of the suggestions previously in the um, in in the previous session was to to actually try to leverage one of the the future um, sessions that the group has to just sit down and based on the template try to to have people fill in um, on the spot <laughs> the case studies um, to to share some of their some of their experiences and and see how um, yeah how we can collect uh, a meaningful set of uh, set of the case studies is um are any of the the activity suggestions um yeah do they look appealing for for any of you to to maybe consider becoming an activity lead within within this and try to to pursue this and do the planning for for this I mean, I understand that this is, it's just in case it aligns, of course, with, with some of the work that, that you are already doing. Okay. Um, yeah, as I, as I imagined, it might be a little bit, a little bit sooner, but we'll try in the spirit of the, of the charter and uh, for the, for the upcoming activities of the, of the group to to outline um, what would be next steps and try to pursue um, these um, as potential outputs for from the from the group. I understand very well that 
yeah, this this might might be something that uh, is uh, will be slowly building building upon uh, in between uh, plenary meetings. And I think that a, a few of the next ones would also be physical meetings, which might allow a little bit, maybe a broader interaction um, if people are in the room and they can sit down and, and discuss maybe one of the one of the case studies or the approach to the to the vocabulary. It might be it might be different. But um, regardless, uh, we'll follow up. And in the meantime, all comments and suggestions are, of course, more than welcome. So um, the other topic that beyond the mapping of the of the activities and understanding what are our ongoing things that we that we should be that we should be considering considering within and outside the, the RDA. The other major topic that uh, we think the, the group should be focusing on is defining the or yeah defining the, the role of the science communication for science communicator for research data. Um, and that means understanding, as I was saying, uh, what what are the activities, what is a competence uh, mapping, and how they integrate within the structures within different organizational structures. Um, I think the the professionalizing data uh, stewardship interest group has done a very very good job at at this. They have done um, they have sort of led the way in terms of defining roles and competence mapping. So perhaps we can um, in one of the next meetings of the of the group we can also have someone from from um, their their group to to join and give us an overview of of how they've approached the the topic. I think they they sort of trailblazed the the approach and we can leverage that. But of course, there's we can always uh, also opt for for alternative approaches. Has anyone been been involved with the with the group? Do you have any? Um, are you? I don't know. Uh, looking yourselves into into the definition of the role of science communicator, do you think that this is a um, a priority topic that we should be looking into? Yeah, one of the ideas that I think were put forward in the previous meeting was that this um, so the. The science communication activities are quite often an addition to the to the role of the researchers. Um, so it it makes their their life a little bit more more complicated. That's why if we do have uh, professional professionals professional science communicators who would be doing this um, this work in close collaboration with the with the researchers, that would be an ideal situation. In any of your organizations, do you have these roles defined? Um, how are your how are you addressing this this need? And how are how are the researchers themselves? Um, I don't know if if we have researchers amongst us and how do they they approach the the science communication activities? Is it a burden? Is it something that they enjoy doing? Would they see this in continuation of their roles? Okay. Yeah, um, I can just uh, continue and just say that um, I, I know that Based on the based on the science communication literature, um, these roles are have often been defined as extremely important, but not very well done. So there seems to be an agreement in within that, and probably the main reason is that the the roles of the of the researchers have just expanded with also this dimension of the of responsibilities. Um, there are um, there are many funding programs um, and uh, processes to to get funding for for specific research 
uh, projects that require a component around communication and, and dissemination. And I think this was another, another idea that was also um, briefly explored in the previous meeting that we, that we have had. We know on the European Commission side that um, there's always a component of communication and dissemination that is included in or requested in the um, in the funding proposals that are that are submitted. So that adds also another dimension to the to the challenge of of getting funding for the for the research activities. But maybe some people consider that as 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 the fun or the pleasant part of their of their job. Okay. Um, I see no strong opinions <laughs> around the the role of the of the science communicators. Um, so yeah, if if nothing else, that would be the that would be the the plan for the for this for this sort of uh, for this sort of topic. So we've outlined that um, that we can use, or it would be a good idea to to use the approach that professionalizing data stewardship interest group has has used within their um, their approach and um, also maybe getting someone from from their group to speak at one of our our next meetings so then we can we can tailor that to 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 our effort and understand what would be the lessons learned from from their approach that we can that we can leverage i had a Final slide on the next um, on the next steps. So yes, we did identify a deadline for the for the contributions to the to the charter. So um, a summary of the next steps as far as um, the charter uh, is 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 regarded. Uh, we welcome contributions by by the tenth of June. That's a date that is to be confirmed in a sense that if you if you let us know that you need more time, that that would also be be, be acceptable. Um, we have we would like to do an internal group group review based on the suggestions and the comments that we that we receive. Um, again, this is also an open call for for potential um, chairs that would be interested um, to join the this this exercise, and then we will submit it to the to the community re review and the formal endorsement. Um, I don't know if we still no. Um, I was wondering if you still had someone from the from the RDA secretariat on the call to just um, check if I remember correctly. I think that the community review lasts for roughly um, roughly a month, and then it will, based on the on the input and the adjustments, it will then pass on to the technical advisory board um, that will do its re do its review, and then it will pass on to the RDA council for the formal endorsement. So I think that's, those are the next steps um, in terms of the interest group um, charter. And then for, for the, for the mapping effort, um, I, as I was saying, it would be nice to, to, to have a few activity um, leads so we have outlined um, the the foreseen outputs for the for the group. So it would be good to to kind of understand um, if there are people who would like to start the work on the specs for the vocabulary and on the templates for the for the case studies. You don't need to to decide now. There's a a little bit of a a silence um, within this um, this specific group, but um, you can take your time, of course, and and let us know if um, if that can be can be of interest. And the same goes also for for the effort around the the role of science communicators. So um, if there are people who are particularly interested in uh, pushing forward the definition of these roles, understanding competences as a means to maybe establish um, these sort of these process processes within their their own organizations, um, that would be that would be most welcome. This is this is what we had actually actually envisioned as the as the next steps to to further consolidate what we what we had said we would do in the in the group charter are there any any questions any volunteers anything that 
that you might want to add to to what we have discussed maybe some topics that we haven't uh, haven't brought up we know that it's quite a horizontal um, overarching topic Okay, so I'll I'll take that as though a positive, um, in a sense that I'm I'm hoping that if um, if there would be different um, different opinions or if people feel that this is not the correct approach, I'm hoping they would they would speak up. So we do have a plan. <laughs> Both for the charter and the and the activities, um, I just wanted to to also highlight the fact that um, the there is a call um, already out for um, sessions for the next plenary, which is a physical or like a hybrid one. There will be virtual um, virtual sessions, but also um, on site. Um, course organization. The next plenary is in Costa Rica, if I'm not mistaken, in November. Um, the call for sessions is already out and will be open until the beginning of July. If I remember correctly, it's the third. So we will try to, to pursue that as that as well. Um, I'm not sure how many how many of you will be if you need to travel, maybe you are from from the from the area. So there will there won't be a lot of travel involved but um yeah we we are hoping to also um have a session at the next at the next plenary and by that time hopefully we will also have the have the charter submitted if not also um reviewed and we can plan more uh, more concretely the the activities to be done okay um, yeah, I think we're very much ahead of time. <laughs> there haven't been uh, that many. There hasn't been that much discussion as we 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 would have hoped. But of course, listening in is always uh, an option, and it's always welcome. So, just maybe can you do a bit of a kind of a reminder about the survey and yes, how it kind of fits in to the uh, to this group and how useful it will be for members of our day to participate in it. So yeah, um, the survey is, um, as I was saying, the survey is part of, of um, actually my, my PhD uh, research project, which focuses on organizational science communication and specifically on, on research um, data. This first part is open to, to individual members of RDA. I'm trying to collect uh, more information on um, the, the actual practices um, of, um, of science communication more broadly, and then um, science communication for research data specifically. Um, there, there are a couple of questions um, also to understand the organizational approaches in support of, of this. Um, we would like to um, understand um, like the the, the approaches across different different domains. Um, we would like to understand how these fit also in the in the consolidated uh, science communication models. So the participatory, the dialogue, and um, the the monodirectional um, models that. Um, Um, yeah, uh, sorry, I was reading the I was reading the the comment from Athena um, to add the survey in the discussions uh, on the community board. Yes, thank you for for that. Um, I had actually opened a, a topic on the on the science communication stories on the on the board, but I will add the survey as well. Thank you, Athena. <laughs> thank you for that. Um, so I will include the the survey to to that as well. Um, it's a it's a it's a straightforward short um, short survey that is designed to to understand a little bit map a little bit better the the practices and specifically for for the for the research data alliance because the research data alliance is is one of the 
you know, the, the drivers in terms of the science communication, um, in terms of the open science movement. It has for over a decade now um, supported the work around sharing the research data and reuse and citation, promoting the, the citations and also around the, the, the career of the researchers that engage with, um, with, with research data specifically. So um, this would contribute to, to one of those social structures that need to be put into, need to be put into place and the social bridges that, that RDA is, um, is working on. So I'll put in the, the survey also to the, to the chat. If, if you haven't got it already, um, I welcome your there. input. Yeah. It will be, it will be open for, for for the upcoming two, two months. Um, any input is, is more than, is more than uh, appreciated. And I'll add it also to the, to the Huva community um, board. Thank you very much. Uh, team, I just want another request. Um, could we have the link um, for the, um, site of this group on the RTA site. Yes, yes. Um, it's... I have put it in the the chat, but I will put it again. Um, so if you if you follow the the link, you should you should be taken to. Let's see if yes. So we have uh, we have a group um, set up on the um, on the RDA website. It currently counts roughly 50, 50 people, um, quite diverse backgrounds. Uh, so you can you can join, I think um, you can very very easily join and be keep keep track of the of the conversations. There are posts. Um, we will add the case statement, and we will hopefully also in the future start consolidating the the output section, which at the moment is 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 empty. But um, the the goal is to have the vocabulary, the case studies, and everything uh, listed as as group outputs that then can be leveraged by 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 others. The case statement will be will be uploaded, or the charter will be uploaded under the case statements, and also the activities for the next plenaries will be will be available under that that section. We'll try to keep in touch through the through the post. Um, I think for the time being, there are just a couple of of my of my notes, calls for contributions, um, and also some communication from the from the RDA secretariat, some events that have been highlighted. So yeah, uh, hopefully this will be a, a useful place where we can we we can keep in touch. So feel free to sign up. We would welcome that. Thank you. Thank you. Just I just maybe I want to say a final Thing. This this is very much in progress. So we really welcome uh, contributions from all of you, from all the members, and we are hoping to get as much involvement from um, RDA members from across discipline um, uh, into this group to be able to kind of be useful and representative for many different disciplines that need to um, do science communication. Uh, so please do feel free that you can very actively participate into it and it is very much welcome and hope to see many of you um, involved in what's gonna come. Yep, um, thank you for, <laughs> for that, uh, yeah. Um, we would very much like uh, so welcome all sorts of uh, welcome all sorts of contribution. The charter should reflect um, your interest in order to be to be really useful. So if you have challenges, um, challenges, questions, things that that you see as uh, as potential, you know, problems that that the group might be might be able to address, those are very much very much welcome. 
um, this is designed to also be a forum where where people can can raise these these questions. There might not be very clear answers, but maybe some some different approaches across um, in different geographical regions might be might be relevant for for you. So, um, yeah, that would be that would be very much welcome. Okay, um, I suggest we we close the session. If there are no other questions or things you'd like to highlight. Well, thank you very much. I will stop the stop the recording and hopefully um, see you in in some of the, the the next meetings of the of the group. Have a good rest of the of the plenary. Thank you very Thanks, much. Dinaya. Thank you, Thank you very too. much. Thank you. Bye. I'm going to stay here for a